Hello, I'm Walt Anderson, coordinator of football officials for the Big 12 Conference. And on behalf of Rogers Redding, national coordinator for college football officiating, we want to spend additional time discussing the new penalty enforcement related to targeting for the 2013 season. One of the phrases that Rogers often uses to place rules applications in proper perspective is don't let perfect be the enemy of good. This applies very well to the national initiative against targeting. Everyone is on board to eliminate the obvious and avoidable hits that meet all of the requirements for targeting. And nobody wants to disqualify a player for action that, while it may involve some helmet contact, does not rise to the level of a foul under either of the two targeting rules, 913 and 914. The rule will be aggressively enforced by officials. But at the same time, we want to give officials specific criteria and language to differentiate true initiating and targeting action from the incidental helmet contact that is a common and legal occurrence throughout normal play during a game. Likewise, coaches and players need to understand the difference between illegal targeting actions that we will aggressively work to eliminate from the game and the hits that are perfectly legal and even often celebrated even though incidental contact to the helmet can occur. Players should pay attention to the guidelines contained in this video that clearly describe actions that create either a high risk for a foul or actions that indicate a low risk of targeting and therefore should be practiced and used. Members of the media and fans also need to be knowledgeable about illegal acts that they too should discourage from the game. We all have a role to play and are responsible to help change this culture that has evolved where, whereby we have a tendency to inappropriately celebrate illegal hits that have no place in our game. If all of us, coaches and players, officials, administrators, members of the media and even fans, if we will work together to change this wrongful culture, then we can be successful in making our game as safe as possible. Whether through aggressive enforcement of the rules, teaching and practicing proper technique, or public criticism and intolerance when a player commits an illegal act rather than glorifying it, all of us can contribute to being part of the solution. Let's send a clear and consistent message that targeting hits have no place in our game. In order to help understand the targeting rules, we have placed targeting fouls into four categories and will address both legal and illegal actions in each of these four. Now, this is not to say that targeting cannot occur with other actions, but these are the four that we have found to be the most common. The definitions of fouls involving 913 and 914 remain the same as last year. The difference is in the penalty enforcement, which now requires disqualification. We want to focus this video on actions that lead to targeting so that we can hopefully teach players how not to tackle, but instead learn techniques that can still be effective yet reduce the risk of injury. The four categories that we want to talk about will involve targeting actions that can occur with a variety of plays. We have found that the most common situations where targeting is most likely to occur is in these four types of plays. Number one, hits on receivers. Number two, roughing the passer. Number three, hits on quarterbacks or runners in both an upright and a sliding position. And number four, blindside blocks. Rogers Redding and the NCAA have produced guidelines to help in identifying specific types of actions that create a high risk of a foul. This is not to say that other actions cannot lead to a targeting foul, but players need to understand that these four actions greatly increase your risk of targeting fouls. These four high-risk guidelines are launching at the opponent by leaving the feet to attack by an upward and forward thrust to make contact to the head and neck area. A thrust upward and forward from a crouch position to attack with contact to the head and neck area.
striking with the helmet, forearm, fist, hand, or elbow to attack the head and neck area. and using the crown of the helmet by lowering the head before attacking the opponent. In addition to the four high-risk actions, there are also four actions that we want to highlight that create a low risk for a foul, and thus are actions that players want to try to use when making contact with an opponent. Again, this is not to say that targeting cannot occur with other, when other acts combine with one or more of these, but these actions will decrease the risk of targeting and will help officials recognize actions that are less likely to result in the initiating and targeting action that leads to these fouls. These four low-risk guidelines are a heads-up tackle in which the crown of the helmet does not strike above the shoulders. A wrap-up tackle, where the player is making a conscious effort to wrap the opponent with the arms rather than attacking him above the shoulders. The head is to the side rather than being used to initiate contact. and a position change of players that is due to the normal course of play that often leads to incidental contact of the helmet, but that is not a part of the initiating and targeting action that is a foul. We will show some examples in each of these categories of both legal and illegal action and want coaches and players to use these guidelines in the context of the video examples that will follow in both this video and a subsequent video that will follow next week. Officials will use these guidelines to help place actions into a process, similar to how we use categories for holding and pass interference, that more objective criteria can be used and we can achieve a higher degree of consistency in determining what is and is not targeting. Let's take a look at some plays in our first category, which is hits on receivers. All of these are going to be, in this section, are going to be hits that are fouls and are targeting in nature. Here the linebacker, totally unnecessary, easily could have avoided this contact. The same here. These are the types of acts we've got to get players used to avoiding. We clearly have time. There, there's. There's nothing but an initiating and targeting component to all of these. These are the type of actions we want to get used to, to seeing on the field. But at the same time, we really want to work at, at players and coaches understanding that we've all got to collectively work at getting these types of hits out of the game. Here the player, the receiver is coming to the ground and there's some, some element that we, we may ask, well, how do we avoid him? And you may end up with some incidental contact, but here the, re the defender lowers his helmet, strikes with the crown of the helmet, totally avoidable. Here again is a situation where the player, is, his head is up, but he's clearly too high in his target zone. And he's going to have to lower the helmet in order to avoid this being a foul. Again, another example of the defender lowering the head, striking with the crown of the helmet. Here, this is a straight shot to the body with the crown of the helmet. Right in the ribs. Yeah, he's exposed to... This is a foul yep. in, uh, involving 914, or excuse me, uh, 913. This is a foul of 913 using the crown. Uh, the head is not hit, but the body is with the crown of the helmet. Again, another example, the head may be up, but the target zone here is just too high, and we're going to have to get used to, to lowering our target zone.
distribute that football. They're going to go and throw that flag on 27. Again, the defender coming in high. This is a foul for targeting. Another example here, the defender easily could have avoided this high hit on the, on the receiver. Instead, he, he lowers his helmet, even aims to the right. Defender here has clearly got to avoid this type of contact to the receiver, correctly called by the umpire. This is a strike, uh, an example of a striking category where the defender goes, uses the left shoulder, left forearm, straight to the head and neck area of the receiver. No elements in terms of trying to get to the head to the side, wrap up, to try to do some of the, the things that would lower the risk of targeting. Here this pass gets intercepted, but the receiver completely defenseless here, takes an unnecessary shot high by the defender. That is targeting. Okay, let's take a look at some examples now that are legal. This is what we want players to to realize that you can you can have hard vicious hits here this is certainly certainly one that would is intense but the head of number 10 is to the side the target zone is lowered contact is to the chest with the right shoulder this is a legal hit here's one where the player actually launches but he launches in a manner that the head is to the side and contact is low and is not to the head and neck area that's a legal hit this is one where you're going to see the head is up and the target zone is low. And, and this is what we want players to, to work to do. Keep the head up. If you can get it to the side, that's fine. But if it's not, you want to just be sure it's clearly, uh, you know, well below the shoulders on this contact, this is a legal hit. This is an example here of a play that last year was correctly handled by the crew. We're going to just let this run. This is a situation where initially there was a targeting foul called by the side judge. The line judge comes in, uh, gets involved, is active, tells the side judge he had a good angle. The, the uh, defender was uh, turning to the side and the contact was with his shoulder. Uh, let's pick this flag up. That's what the crew does. Referee simply turns, makes an announcement. Uh, this is how we want these to be handled when, when we're not certain that we've got a foul. We want other officials who have, a, in this case, a better angle to get involved, not to assume that the official who, who throws the flag uh, is, uh, has the best angle. Here's one where both players are just simply playing the football. They're both diving for a pass between them, and there ends up being incidental helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. That's not a foul. Again, both players are playing the ball. Uh, and you're going to have some, some contact to the, to the head. In this case, it's helmet to helmet. But there's no initiating and targeting component here. This is just incidental to the game. And it's not the type of action that is a foul. And this should not be called. This is the same player that committed a foul earlier. Uh, number 30, this is proper technique. The head is to the side. Leads with the shoulder to the chest, legal hit. Here's a launch again. That a launch in and of itself is not illegal if we're not attacking the head and neck area, which we're not in that case. The head here is, uh, again, another vicious hit. Serves its purpose, dislodges the football from the receiver. Uh, but the defender is turning his head. He's leading with his shoulder, not his, not his helmet. And uh, this, is, uh, this is exactly what we want defenders to do as they contact receivers. Example here, this is, we're going to have a good uh, replay of this, of this play where both the defender and the receiver see each other coming and both of them end up through a normal position change. They end up turning away from this and there may be some incidental uh, helmet contact. This is not a foul by either player. This is just incidental to the game and should not be called. This is not an illegal hit on a receiver. Again here, good example, number eight, the defender. Good job turning his shoulder into the, into the receiver, legal hit. Another example here of a position change where both players, the defender, number 10, is he's turning his head, he's trying to get low. He's doing exactly what we want a defender to do. 
the receiver who, see, who at the last moment sees the contact coming, lowers his helmet, and, and that resulting position change uh, will often result in some, in some incidental helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. That's not a foul. Good example of the defender wrapping up, not leading with the helmet. This is good technique. Not a foul uh, by number 35. This concludes part one of the targeting training video. We will continue with the other categories in part two that will follow in next week's edition.